Um, so yeah, I'm, I'm Leonie Welling from Welling Architects. And um, so I was one of the participants of this, uh, this What If Lab. And um, for us, what we're, uh, so we're an architecture office and, and we try to focus a lot on circular uh, building. Um, and that for us, it's not just about the materials that we use, but it's also uh, a lot about rethinking the design brief. Because I think our society very often thinks of uh, very stereotypes. Like if you're designing a station, uh, a lot of people have a station in mind. They have a building, a certain building in mind. They have the, the platforms in mind, the way they look. And that they take as a departure point for uh, designing the train station. Um, and often also the clients, it, that is what they asking for. They specify a brief saying we, we need this with this much square meters and out of these materials, for example. Um, and this what if lab allowed us to uh, basically rethink the design brief. Like what is a train station? This was um, the question that we asked ourselves. And basically it's, it's a place for where people can get on and off the train, where uh, that can where encounters can happen, uh, and maybe where you can lounge or maybe maybe consume, and this actually uh, defines a, a surface that is provided, and it doesn't spe specify the physical appearance of it. Uh, so with this in mind, we basically said like, what if we can uh, facilitate a station in a natural natural landscape? So it's, it's a surface that is provided somewhere. So we don't build a train station, but we design a natural landscape in such a way that it can host a train station. Um, and that was the base for our, uh, for our design. And we um, basically uh, identified certain natural elements, so as, such as a landscape morphology uh, that can form either a barrier or ac actually can help you to overcome certain barriers. Um, and certain types of vegetations, like we have uh, soft vegetation, so that can be uh, like grasses or fields of flowers that can be used for recreation. Uh, then you have um, uh, more like imperative um, vegetation. So these are uh, shrubs that actually can form a barrier within the landscape. And you can have uh, guiding um, vegetation. So these are more like lines of trees that mark the route or singular trees that stand out and mark a certain spot. And by, by organizing these elements in a certain way, you can uh, provide a, um, an, like an atmospheric environment that can be used for recreational purposes, but at the same time host and facilitate a train station. Um, and for those elements like stairs or for uh, waiting pavilions that cannot be made 100% out of natural elements, at, out of vegetation, we applied um, materials that can be found in um, basically harvested in the local, local environment that are renewable or used elements that uh, actually are uh, old train track material, for example, for uh, retaining walls or for uh, staircases. Um, and in that way, uh, by using these kind of elements and defining the layout in such a way, in this, in this case, in this image, you can see very well the diagonal crossing paths. From this way, by, um, you have, like from anywhere, if you park your bike, for example, in the front, there are multiple equally long routes that lead to the train track platform that also then uh, stimulates the user to use the whole length of the platform so that everybody like can get in at a different door in the train and not like what is currently very often the case in Holland, everybody arrives at the platform at the same uh, spot and they all try to enter the train through one door. Um, and in this way, basically you, you stimulate the user to use the entire length of the train station and at the same time, basically the train station is non-existent anymore because it's a park where a train station is facilitated.